Hey YouTubers, thanks for tuning in and watching our videos and for those that subscribe we really appreciate your support. In this video we have changed the factory OEM suspension on the forks and the rear spring on this 2017 Honda Africa Twin. As many of you know the Africa Twin can be undersprung for many riders and changing those springs can really be a benefit in performance and safety. Um, if you have the means, take your bike to a full suspension guru and let them set it up all the way from top to bottom. But at a very minimum, change out your forks springs to a higher rate and your rear spring to a higher rate. That way you have a lot more options and safety. Okay, so the first thing we're gonna do is, um, I've decided to do one fork at a time. I'm gonna remove my wheel and I'm gonna remove one half of the mud guard and leave that attached, which will give me access to pull out one fork. So we're just gonna go ahead and remove the, um, the rear part of the, of the uh, mud guard and then the, the, the front two screws. And then we have to remember that we need to remove the, the wheel sensor as well. Okay, one of the very first things we need to do is remove the front wheel. So we're going to loosen up the two pinch bolts on the axle nut side. We're gonna loosen up the axle nut, then the remaining two pinch bolts and pull the front wheel. Okay, so the only thing now um, that is gonna restrict the, the fork from coming out is the caliper on this side. So we're gonna remove this caliper and then we're going to tie it up so it's supported, so it's not hanging. And this is a 14 millimeter bolt, both of them, two of them. Okay, so the next thing we're gonna do is set the, um, the rebound and the preload to minimum settings. So both of these will turn to soft, which is counterclockwise. And then next we're going to um, back out the preload to full soft with a 19 millimeter socket. According to the Haynes manual, the compression uh, does, not, does not matter. So you can just leave that where you have it. Okay, so I have my my rebound set to full soft, and that's according to the Haynes manual. Now, I think in theory that the rebound could be full hard because in my mind, the needle and full soft is, for lack of a better description, is, is fully in and letting oil come through. And if you have it backed out full hard, um, the needle would be back into the connecting rod and be pr more protected. So I think there's two different schools of thought there, but I'm going to go by the Haynes manual but if you know better than I do, please comment in below. Okay, the next thing to do is to take um, these pinch bolts and loosen them up so that you can relieve some pressure off of your, your outer tube and then you can um, loosen up your cap. Not fully, but just enough because you will not be able to do this once the fork is out. So the, the bottom yoke is tight and we're just release, releasing the top pinch bolts. Okay, so now um, before I remove the forks, I just wanted to loosen up this cap just a little bit, just enough where I can, I can do it easily when the fork is removed. So I've done maybe a quarter of a turn. Okay, the last thing before we can remove the fork is to get these lower pinch bolts. And these ones, um, those are 12 millimeter. Mm -hmm. Were the top ones full too? That's right. Okay, now you can just give us a little tug and this should just slide right out. Just like that, your fork removed. Let's take a look to see how soft these are. Look at this, I'm not even, look how soft this is. I'm not even hardly putting any pressure. Okay, so before you remove the cap and slide the outer tube down, what you wanna do is really clean up these lower tubes and inspect them for any damage because 
Right now we're going to be sliding the dust seal and the oil seal straight down on this as far as it can go. Okay, so I don't see any, any reason um, why I should be concerned about sliding this all the way down as the outer or the inner tube is very clean. And I don't see any dings that would rip a, rip a seal or anything. So next thing we're gonna do is remove the cap. And if I loosen this enough, this should be able to be done by hand. Um, there shouldn't be much pressure on here, but although there could be a, just a little bit. So just be careful when removing this cap as there could be a little bit of pressure left. And we're gonna slide this all the way down. Okay, so this can be a messy job. So I'm going to dump a little bit of oil out right now while I have the outer collar up. And I see what I'm gonna call kind of dirty oil, to be honest with you, with a little bit of silver, which indicates that uh, there's some metal from the spring rubbing against the outer of the collar. Okay, with this specialty tool, which is a uh, spring compressor, you're just gonna slide it over the cap and you're gonna line it up with the, the holes that are in the spacer. And we'll just try to get it nice and even. And this will give us the ability to push down the spring. And then we're gonna insert this in uh, underneath the lock washer, between the, the spacer and the lock washer, which will allow us to remove the, uh, the cap. So here we go. Okay, just like that. So you, you wanna have it between the, the spacer and the lock washer, or excuse me, the lock nut. Keep this, this spacer up. Okay, so with, this, with the, uh, the spacer down, you're gonna hold the lock nut, the 14 millimeter lock nut, and you're going to take the 19 millimeter, which is your preload, and you're going to remove this, remove this cap. This can be um, a little tight, but not too tight. And just like that, it's, it's loose. And now you can just remove it all the way. Okay. And we're gonna pull this completely out. And just be very careful not to, not to bend that. So we're gonna put that down carefully. We're gonna remove this spacer. And then we're going to push down on the special tool and remove this and relieve the pressure. This can now be removed and we can take out the spacer. Keep in mind that the, the colored is on the bottom and I will Drain this fork again, pumping. Oop, watch the spring. The spring can jump out at you. Okay, so we're gonna put this back upright and I'm gonna remove the spring. This is the OEM spring, which has the progressive wound on the bottom for reference. And then we will try to dump the remaining amount of oil that we can get by it. And then you can let that drain for a little bit. Okay, so on my right is the OEM spring. And on my left is the new Hyper Pro spring. This came out of the fork with the progressive on the bottom, but Hyper Pro says to put their forks in with the progressive at the top. The feel of this spring is just way, is way more beefier. Each individual coil is just so much thicker and there are more additional coils as well. I've counted these. Um, so there's actually more coils on this as well and it is just a, a very much improvement as far as, as stiffness. Okay, the next uh, 
thing we're gonna do is we're gonna pour in the Hyper Pro fork oil, which is 15 weight, which I believe the OEM is 10 weight. So we are increasing the weight of the oil. So Hyper Pro sends this oil with their, their kit and we're not gonna measure this. We're just going to probably have too much in there and we'll suck it out to the right level. So with the fork tube all the way down, we're just gonna pour slowly. Okay, pour the Hanes manual. Now you want to lift up on this outer tube all the way up. And then put your hand over it and it'll bleed out the air. And there are some bubbles there, so. Okay, and then next we're gonna take the inner rod and we're gonna start pumping it until it has really good action. And there's a hole in here, so be careful because you can start shooting oil across the garage floor. So just go all the way down and all the way up. Okay, so this is the Motion Pro fork oil leveling tool. And according to Hyper Pro, the distance down should be 188, or excuse me, 180 millimeters. So I've got this set at 180. And just try to keep your fork level. We're checking, we're doing this level without the spring and without the spacer. Okay. All right, so that puts us at 180 millimeters down. Now we're gonna pull up the, the rod and we're going to Put the Hyper Pro spring in, and it looks really clean. And of course, the progressive springs are up. Okay, and this will start to sink on you, so just be aware of that. The next thing we're gonna do is put the spacer with the colored end down. And we'll have to be kind of quick on this because this will start to sink. Okay, so now I'm holding the rod from sinking. And we're gonna have to use our specialty tool here again. So we'll have to be kind of quick on this. This is way tougher than the oh yeah. Okay, now um, just a little tip here. You want to make sure you don't move this nut. I held it with with the 14 millimeter, but kind of moving around, I um, I feel like I moved it a little bit. So I'm going to rotate it down just slightly, leaving leaving about. I don't know, just a couple of threads from bottom. On the Haynes manual, it says that you should measure this as 10.5 millimeters. I don't really have a way of measuring that, um, but I, when, I, when I took it apart, I, I realized there was just a couple of threads left on the bottom. So I'm just gonna set it there and, and I'm gonna call it good. So the next thing I'm going to do is just put the spacer back so I don't forget it. And then we're gonna take the cap and we're going to insert this very slowly, very gently, nice and straight. Let it sink on its own weight. And we are just gonna hand thread this 
until it stops on that locking nut. It's like that. Okay, next we're just gonna take the 14 millimeter locking washer and we're gonna tighten up this cap. And I'm not gonna get overly aggressive with this, kind of where I feel like it needs to be. Once it's under pressure, I don't think it's gonna go anywhere, so just give it a nice torque. And then we are ready to remove all of these tools and just make sure the spacer seats into this, into this other spacer here. Now you can remove this. And then we're gonna raise up the outer tube. We're gonna give just a little bit of, a little bit of oil on this O-ring up here. It looked a little dry to me, so I just put a little oil on that. Okay, now we're going to raise this up and go backwards until we hear it click, and then we know that the threads are lined up. Okay, there's the click, and then now we know that the threads are lined up. We're just gonna do this by hand, and I am turning the outer tube up until I can't do it anymore. Just like that, the hard part is done. Okay, so the last thing I'm gonna do is just take a little bit of high temp grease, and I'm just gonna work it around this tube right at the oil seal, all the way around. You don't need very much. And then I'm going to just make a nice ring. This is a tip that I picked up from Dave Moss Tuning. He's a suspension guru on the internet, and this is what he recommends. And then we're gonna give it a full flex and try to pull all of that grease up into the dust seal. Two, three. All right, one fork serviced, new springs. Going back up through the bottom yoke and the top yoke. Okay, so with the fork in place, what we're gonna do is just uh, Tighten up these uh, bottom yoke, or the bottom triple tree, just so the fork can't slip. And we'll come back and torque these up. Triple tree is, is locked down. We can torque this to 35 newton meters, which is about 25 and a half foot pounds. Torque down, the top yoke goes to 25 newton meters, which is approximately 18 and a half foot pounds. Okay, now that the front end is done, we're gonna work on the rear shock. And um, I've removed my passenger foot peg. That is not necessary. I just did that for, for clarity, uh, for filming. Um, and then the, the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna back out my preload. Um, some people remove their rear wheel. I don't think that's necessary. So we're gonna, we're gonna attempt to do this without removing the rear wheel. And then, so the next thing that we're gonna do is just remove the rectifier here. So there's two plugs. We're gonna unplug the electrical and then there's two 10 millimeter bolts that we're gonna loosen up and take off the rectifier. Okay. okay, so attached to your swing arm is your knuckle. And then attached to the back end of the knuckle is your two dog bones on each side. So we're gonna loosen off this 17 millimeter nut and remove this bolt so that these dog bones can swing down.
Okay, now on the, your knuckle, on the front bolt, again, it's a 14 on the bolt head and a 17 on the nut. And we are gonna loosen that up. And now your knuckle will spin out of the way. Your bolt heads go on the left side of your bike and the nuts go on the right side. That may not matter, but I'm just gonna put it back to the way the factory was. Okay, through your access holes on your frame on both sides, we have the top bolt of the shock. And on the right side is the nut, and on the left side is the bolt head. The nut is 17 mil again, and the bolt head is 14. And I'm gonna try to do this without anybody holding the other side. And I think it might be working. <laughs> You may lose the nut on this, but I will try to capture it inside the socket if I can. But if it falls, you'll just have to go on a scavenger hunt. And it came all the way through, so lucky me. Okay, so ultimately you need to decide how you're going to compress these springs. This is the OEM, so of course this one will be a little bit easier than the, the new one that's going on. Um, we're using these compression tools, but we recommend that you um, take this to a shop, have them uh, put the spring on, or find a, a suitable method that you feel safe with. But use, use your discretion and uh, just be smart about it. Okay, with the OEM spring off, um, with this is the bottom of the shock, even though it looks like the top right now. And on the Hyper Pro spring, you've got some tight coils and you've got some looser coils. The tight coils go at the bottom. So we're gonna have them facing up right now. And that is the new shock spring on. And just make sure your preload is on the little Recess. All right, Michael, what do you have to say? It's a little scary, but it's on. All right, so thanks again for tuning in. We appreciate you watching our videos and be on the lookout for other videos coming our way. So just one last thing to add, on this Hyper Pro kit that we installed, it did raise the bike by 20 millimeters. You don't have to grab that option. And we have set the rear spring and the front forks to the, to the recommended settings that Hyper Pro provides.